Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and you're very warm welcome to Friday Frightworks. This week, on location in Mauer, Switzerland, just outside Zurich, at the absolutely incredible, really is a treasure trove, Power Place Studios. Pretty much guarantee you've never seen anything like this place. Let's dive right in. <laughs> So as I said, we're on location this week, so it's going to be a little bit of a shorter video than usual. But this place is too cool not to document to some degree, to be honest. We're here with Cardinal Black doing the uh, the kind of basic tracks, I guess, at the start of our second record, or next record, which will be out at some point next year, I imagine. And it's been an incredibly productive couple of days. We've pretty much finished up with drums now, pretty much finished with guitars, actually, in terms of basic tracking anyway. And today's primarily been spent on a couple of different keys bits and, and vocals tomorrow. So uh, it's been a productive week. But as I said, this is just an absolute treasure trove of a place wherever you turn this just incredibly cool pieces of gear invariably pretty old pretty expensive as well I imagine so I thought it'd be cool to document at least to some degree starting with which this absolutely beautiful 1963 Fender Vibroverb been using this on the last track that we've been recording actually it's honestly it's hard to get a bad sound out of it been running it at about three on the volume and the, uh, the treble and bass as you can see and reverb of course that was the first Fender amplifier to have reverb actually built into the amp um, which was followed very shortly by this Fender Deluxe Reverb of course I did a video on the Deluxe Reverb a couple of weeks back I do believe this is 1966 um, it's an absolutely glorious sound amplifier um, and my love affair with the Deluxe Reverb very much continues an amp that I've not actually used actually on this session plugged into it the other day but um, didn't kind of suit the vibe that I was kind of shooting for at that point it's a 1964 non-top boost AC30 uh, but again it sounds absolutely gorgeous it's a very cool amp got the piggyback cab here for a Fender Bandmaster the head of which is in the control room at present and to be honest, that's about 10% uh, of the amps that you can actually see. Speaking of which, some more behind you as well. We've got a 59 Fender Baseman. Again, I've not used it as of yet, but there's still time. We've got a couple of overdubs coming up actually on guitars later. As well as a 59 Fender Deluxe. Again, stunning little amp. Will no doubt be put to good use. In terms of acoustic guitars, I'm very much not the guy you asked, to be honest. Um, can't really tell you the specs, but I've got an old Gibson there. That's primarily been using the control room actually just to kind of kind of test out a couple of ideas tracking wise for acoustic guitar I do believe it's been solely this 1961 Martin it's just one of those guitars that as soon as you stick it in front of a mic it sounds particularly good no doubt the internet will go wild for a uh, clip on tuner on the headstock obscuring the logo it's a Sigma really um, and then we've got another old Gibson clearly I've seen some use looks like it's lived at the bottom of swamp for most of its life but um, again just <laughs> Sounds particularly nice, particularly deep, and particularly resonant. A lot of mics I can't tell you anything about because I don't know what they are. We've got an old Leslie in the corner. I do know what that microphone that is. That is a AEA, I do believe, stereo ribbon mic. I know that because we used it on the uh, the one mic sessions. Behind you, again, we've got some key stuff that I'm not the guy to be telling you about. This is an old Backstein upright piano. We've got a Hammond a B3. We've got an old Juno synthesizer over there as well. Sounds like pretty much every 80s record ever made. And, uh, and a Wurlitzer, of course. So, in regards to the live room, 
Um, I think that's pretty much it. As I said, in regard to guitar amps, this is about 10% of uh, Cyril, studio owner's collection. So really been spot for choice when it comes to guitar tones. Speaking of which, let's take a look. <laughs> Before we get to the guitars, quick stop in Synthland. Got an old Mellotron there, or a new Mellotron I want to say. Actually, I don't think they had digital displays when the Beatles were using them. Um, and an old Mini Moog synth as well, which apparently is analog, so has to be tuned as such. Anyway, moving on to guitars. First among which, a guitar that's seen a lot of use actually over the course of this session so far. Um, incredibly versatile given it's one pickup, is of course a 1957 Les Paul Jr. More recent bridge, I do want to say on that one, so we have some degree of kind of, um, yeah, kind of compensation or intonated uh, bridge. Apparently there is a Keith Richards connection with this guitar. Not entirely sure what that is off the top of my head, but um, if Keith has owned it or played it, then it's certainly good enough for me. If we get that out of the way for a second, staying with Les Pauls, we have, I do believe, in 1972 Les Paul Custom, kind of first couple of years at least of the reissues. Of course we got that staple pickup in the neck and a P90 in the bridge. It's not actually that heavy as well considering it's a Les Paul Custom so that's quite cool. Telecasters we are definitely spoiled for choice. We've got an old Blackguard here. Um, again I do believe this belongs to Kirk Fletcher actually so uh, just let me use it Kirk. It's a 52 body and I want to say a 56 neck maybe. Uh, it's just a little bit of a kind of parts caster I guess in that respect but as parts casters goes it's a pretty good one. I have a 56 Telecaster as well that's uh, clearly seen some use. It's an absolutely stunning guitar. I've not used that one as of yet primarily because that black guard is so bloody good. Moving on to one of my favourite guitars in the world. You've probably seen this if you've seen Friday Fratworks recently or any kind of Jazzmaster content I've done. It's a 1963 so it's a veneer board. Again clearly has seen a hell of a lot of love over the years. It's uh, one of the kind of most heavily used guitars I've ever seen, I think, but it, you know, it plays as such. It's just beautifully worn in and uh, sounds absolutely stunning.
moving on, we have, I do believe, Cyril told me a 58, I want to say, 58 Stratocaster. Again, <laughs> testament to the fact it's been used, is its way, it's uh, seen a lot of love. That's um, had a couple of use, uh, bits of use on rhythm tracks, actually, a couple of kind of cleaner rhythm parts. A guitar that has had a lot of use is this. It's a Refin, hasten to point out, 63 Strat, as is this one, um, which is a beautiful colour, really is lovely. I don't know what that started life as, but it's kind of yellowed. It's on fairly kind of nicotine stained over the years, but the looks of it. Moving on to the desk which if you're going to have a studio filled with uh, cool vintage gear, you might as well have a vintage Neve. Its heritage apparently dates back to um, the Disney studio, I do believe, and then after it was owned by Disney, it was owned by Stevie Nicks. So it's gone from Mickey Mouse to um, the hedonistic days of Fleetwood Mac, I would imagine. Say no more. Got an old tube take out, uh, tape back over there that's been used with um, some kind of synth tracks, actually, this afternoon, more than guitars. Um, we're running Pro Tools, and then there's a load of kind of rack gear here, of which, again, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not the guy to be telling you. I recognise the old distressors. There's a couple of cool old kind of compressors. Uh, we were running the drums through that yesterday. Running the bass, actually, through that yesterday, I do believe. Um, with an old uh, Fender Mustang from 1969, sounding particularly good. Over here, we've got some more guitars. Revstar, that was the last one being used, hence why it's not in the guitar rack. And, of course, we have my Panucci. They were the two guitars that I brought with me kind of uh, knowing what Cyril had and kind of, you know, wanting there to be a, a kind of good Les Paul option. That was the one I brought. Um, and that's pretty much it in regard to gear. Oh, actually, speaking of which, this down there, we have a couple of pedals, a couple of extra pedals, which I've been using. Swatch, a watch I may have bought today in Zurich. We've got an old matchless that I've not used as of yet. And that's the, the head for that piggyback Bandmaster cab in there that I was using earlier. Some extra pedals, not entirely sure what that is. That got some use on some rhythm tracks earlier. It's a basic audio scarab, apparently. The um, Walrus Audio, I want to say slow, but Cyril, who I assume has better pronunciation than I, is saying slur, something like that, which I thought was a drink. Octoland, King Tone Octoland, that's not been used as of yet, but I've been sure it sounds great, and that has been used. That's an Octahive by B Tronics. I mean, while we're here, I might as well see some of the rest of the gear. So uh, if you follow me up, let's take a look. <laughs> so it's getting a little bit late in the day and it's dark as such, but again, kind of uh, a couple more amps here. We've got an old Princeton, a couple of old Marshalls, Bogners, Matchlesses, an old Vox. Again, not entirely sure what um, that is or how it different is different from downstairs. We've got an old Deluxe. What is that? That looks amazing. I'm guessing that's a kind of champ of some description, is it? Don't know. My uh, tiny Fender knowledge is a little bit lacking. We've got some old Tweed stuff again, Supros, old Fender reverb tanks, a couple more acoustics. We've got a Clapton signature model over there, I can see. And behind you, even more guitars. Yeah, apologies, it's a little bit dark in here, but uh, again, testing out the fact that we're really not lacking in gear when it comes to this place. It is absolutely breathtaking. and. Just an incredibly inspiring environment as well to work in, you know, everywhere you turn there's cool guitars, there's cool inspiring gear to work with, so uh, yeah, it's been a very interesting, very productive couple of days and uh, I'm very excited to see how the record turns out. So uh, as I said, it's a bit of a kind of, a bit of a shorter episode than usual this week, so it's kind of a little bit ad hoc I guess as such, but uh, thank you for watching. I shall leave you to it now. Please subscribe at the bell icon, all the usual stuff if you haven't already. And I shall see you next week for a more fully fledged episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you soon.